I can remember drawing a perfect circle and showing it to my parents and at that time they were completely blown away and you know made me feel so confident in what I'd just done that I, I believed from then that I was an artist and that was what I was going to be. Well right through school my art was my favourite subject obviously and I always um, had high marks in art. In uh, school cert year I I got one of the highest marks in New Zealand, in fact it made the paper in those days. I was the first student that was allowed to sit the exam that would get me into art school. So I spent a glorious year um, in my uh, seventh form year just doing um, art and English, the other subject I loved so much. I really did absolutely believe that I would be going to art school. Finally the day came when the, when the letter arrived, very official looking letter arrived and I pulled it out of the envelope, opened it up, passed in English, failed in art, and my whole world crashed. When I was 30, I started to sculpt and to paint again. Um, I found the courage to do it somehow. And then I started to exhibit my work, and it started selling, and selling very well. So, and I mean, that was just such a confidence booster for me to think, you know, I'm on my way as an artist. And so I formed a cooperative of other artists in the community, there were seven of us, and we went to work restoring this beautiful little pioneer cottage, which is still standing there very proudly today. A friend who lived down the road from me, I was living on a farm in those days, had told me about an advertisement in the paper for um, an exhibition of wearable art. So I flew to Auckland to have a look just for the day, to go up and have a look at this wearable art exhibition, only to be horribly disappointed to find there was a rack of silk dresses that were hand painted with flowers and what have you and tie dyed hanging on coat hangers. But you know, <laughs> the seed of an idea was born quite frankly from that moment. At that point I totally saw wow as you see it today. It was just as clear as that. I saw it as this magnificent theatrical event with incredible um, works of art being worn on the body. And the little first show was born out at William Higgins Gallery, the Cobb Cottage in Wakefield on a very stormy, rainy night. It was successful right from the start, you know, 17 years in, I really desperately wanted to keep it here. You know, I'm a Nelsonian, I live here, um, I love Nelson. and you know, suddenly to pull, and Nelson was very proud of WOW, you know, Nelson came alive in the springtime and it brought a total vibrancy to the whole culture of Nelson and really coloured the region. Um, and there was a lot of pride from Nelsonians in it. Um, so I was, I was a very unpopular girl when, <laughs> when we, we had to make that move across to Wellington. Um, obviously once we got there, it started to grow quite rapidly again. I mean, WOW is now bringing uh, something like $26 million into the local economy every season. It's no matter how big your vision, how hard that mountain is to climb, just never give up. And surround yourself in the right people, people that also take part in that dream and that vision, and are prepared to work, um, you know, as hard as you do, I suppose.